Pleasure to be uh, you here. wrote a great piece last week, uh, sort of a 30,000 foot view of, uh, of the era we're in. And you, your argument is that there are three phases, uh, preservation, where everybody's sort of trying to just stay together, consolidation, and then innovation. Are we moving from phase one of that list to phase two? I, I think on average, the answer to that is yes. Uh, you know, I was listening earlier. Everyone likes the phrase, the new normal. I think everyone also hates the phrase, the new normal. Um, it's going to be a long time before anything is normal in this environment. You know, first thing, people were trying to hold stuff together. Um, then you saw some winners develop, uh, mostly digital. Um, and that became the trend of the month. Um, now you see a lot of people going into reopening trades. Uh, but what we're going to see in the consolidation phase is the winners are going to win because people can't afford to take risk on new players or people who fail during the shutdown. And so whether you're redesigning your supply chain or you're thinking about your own personal uh, use of stores, uh, you're going to be looking at the people who are able to supply you during the last couple of months. They're going to be viewed as the safe choice. That's going to continue to push the kind of consolidation market share gains we've seen in a lot of the stronger performers. Uh, but that success eventually will lead to new competition. They'll set the standard, and that'll bring new people into their spaces. Interesting. But does the level of, uh, does the amount of money that's been raised in, in, say, corporate debt or the commitment of central banks to protect challenged companies, does that make that dis, uh, delineation more, more difficult? Are there going to be zombie companies out there that maybe shouldn't be around uh, for a while? Well, that, the, the tricky thing about the transition is going to be distinguishing between zombie companies and companies that are retooling. You know, if you go back to the financial crisis, there were, a fair, there were probably 20 percent of the market that needed significant change inside their own corporate design and were able to do so successfully. Um, and so that's not a one month, a two month or even a six month process. But there's a lot of companies that are going to be looking at how they were run. They're going to redesign the way they were run to match the people who were more successful. We're going to take a lot of learning out of this process, particularly about supply lines. Uh, there were a lot of companies that were running, you know, 10,000 mile long supply lines that went through, you know, singular islands of supply, uh, lots of single points of failure that had enormous troubles during this crisis. Nobody will do that again. Everybody will make sure they have multiple suppliers. Everybody will make sure there's flex in their supply chain. And that redesign is going to give you a whole new structured supply chain. Steve, I wonder um, to what degree it's also just been a, a big cyclical reset of the type you see after recessions, just in an accelerated way. And I'm thinking mostly of, of wage pressures. If you thought coming into this year that it was late cycle type dynamics and companies were going to have a hard time maintaining margins and the pendulum was swinging from, from capital to labor, that seems to have all changed right now. How does that filter in? It's changed, but it's going to take a couple of months to, to refine the microeconomics of that. If you look at the unemployment we're looking at, it is predominantly low wage. It's predominantly services. Uh, so that's not going to do a lot to reduce inflationary pressures in goods. The reduced inflationary pressure in goods really came out of just a massive drop in demand. So as demand comes back, cyclical demand comes back, you're going to see goods prices probably lead the way, which is completely different than what we've been looking at for the last two cycles. Uh, and on the wage side, particularly service wages, that's probably going to be the slow-moving segment this cycle, because of all the excess supply and all of the difficulties reintegrating those supply chains. Uh, so, you know, as opposed to what we've been used to, which is services wage-led inflation, we're probably going to have a goods-led inflation this time.